three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today we have a special guest. Uh, we have Corey Stout. CEO the captain. Of Woody's The Captain. Hell yeah. Um, so, uh, Wayne and I both have had a pair of these Woody's for four years. I, I've been wearing them for about four years, I'd say. Four years? Yeah. Um, yeah, we love the, the sunglasses. We love the company. We love the, the motto, the brand. We love everything about it. Uh, so we wanted Corey here to talk about it and ask him a few questions. Corey, how's it going, man? Ahoy there, gentlemen. It's going great. It's going great. Thanks for having me on the pod. I'm really excited to be here. Let's do this. Yeah, no problem. Um, so how's Italy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, uh, Italy is great. I met a girl uh, about six months ago, Italian sensation. And uh, we were separated by COVID immediately after we met. We're just locked out. And then <laughs> I, I found a way to finagle myself into Italy before I'm pretty sure I was allowed to be here. And so I've been, I've been here with her and summertime in Italy has just it's been great. It's been great. You need to make that a love story, bro. A modern day love story. <laughs> met a girl in Italy separated saying, by COVID. Yeah. yeah. Netflix, buy your- that up. I'm saying there's a whole story out there. Uh, what was cool is we, we met up in London because that was the first like neutral zone. Like she couldn't travel to the US and I couldn't travel to Italy, but we were both allowed to get to the UK uh, because of Brexit. Okay. And, we, and we met other couples from like Brazil, like all these different places that it, this was like all these couples separated. This was their neutral zone. So there, there could be a freaking cool story about that. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, wow. so Jordan found Woody's on Amazon. Um, okay. I found, I found, and then I found you just found Woody'sUSA.com. Um, okay. And there's a lot of stuff that I had questions for because a lot of it was similar mm-hmm. stuff that, because you were talking to Jordan about the books over here. Yeah, I, yeah. Love, I love to read and fill my brain with all this kind of mm-hmm. knowledge. And awesome. when someone matches that vibe, and they put it into action and be and do something great like you have, mm-hmm. dude. I have to talk to this person. You know, like it was an immediate like we got to talk to this guy. And they're quality awesome. things too. I worked at a prison. I've worked construction. Even when I worked at a prison, you know, getting in fights, put them on pocket, they wouldn't break. You yeah, know, I mean, wow. they, they, dude, I, I have yet to break the. I've dropped them in a. I've dropped them off of uh, like telephone poles. You know, doing electrical work. I've, yeah, and they I've dropped yeah. them in augers. They, I can't break them. Yeah. It, they, <laughs> they're, they're I can't. Sturdy. But where, how'd you come up with the idea for Woody's, the brand, everything about it? What was the thing that made you go, oh, like the click? Mm. Well, pretty soon I want to hear more stories about prisons and telephone poles because that, that sounds ah. awesome. Uh, for <laughs> yeah. real. But uh, the, the idea for Woody's came from my cousin Clint. He, is, uh, he works on classic cars. And, and he was, that explains he was, it. He was, he was getting me into the classic car vibe and, and he was telling me about Woody's. And, you know, I've seen pictures of these woody cars but his his cousin had one for sale in tulsa oklahoma where i'm from near, near tulsa and uh and so him and i got together and we started restoring a 1953 mercury woody wagon and so i was like man wood yeah, okay. is fun wood is great and, and wood is more useful than people think about it's a great building material so i'm like man you that forever sunglasses <laughs> wood and um you know something functional but also beautiful because wood. And that was that was the deal for Woody. That's why I call it Woody. Is that uh, where you got Sandy from? Is that the that the same yeah. one? That's no Sandy. way. That's exactly yeah. That's Sandy. Wow. Yeah, we that's cool. Have a, uh, we have a buddy. Um, so he was he moved because of work, but he's he lives twenty minutes away from Tulsa. So I'm very familiar oh, yeah? with that area. Definitely. So um, it's kind of cool that you grew up there. It's, I mean, it's not like I mean even that whole area like Owasso and kind of that general region. Um, yeah. It's pretty nice. I mean, it's kind of similar to where we are up here in the we that we're in Kansas, we're near Kansas City. So it's kind of okay. similar to kind of that Mecca. But I think um, it's an underrated. It's an underrated area. That's for that's for sure. Underrated. For sure. Um but um so I I also read that um you had enough money to hire hire Kendall Jenner. Is that a true story? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see uh, the photos on there and everything. Yeah, I, I saw her face. Oh, man. And, but I heard this. It didn't turn out the way you thought. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was reading the story on Starter Story, which you did probably, it looks like a couple years ago, probably. Uh, yeah. And 
I mean, you ever congratulations, you talked down her agent from one hundred and fifty thousand to Yeah, how did you how did you swing that, man? You, <laughs> you need to be on American Pickers. You would be great yeah, at that, yeah. you know? Like, how did you swing was, that? That whole thing was such a blur. I I don't know how I pulled that off. Uh my best friend and I, he he's a model, and so we were planning a photo shoot for Woody's. And we were just sitting there, just shooting the shit. And he's like, he's like, man, who's the who's the biggest name you could ever want to hire? And I was like, dude, put me on Kendall Jenner. I'll, you know, I want to hire her. And so <laughs> it's 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 a ridiculous idea. But so what did I do? I just Googled her agent, and then num- number came up, and I called, and they said, hello, you know, who's this? And then I'm like, I'd like to talk to Kendall Jenner's manager, and they're like, okay, please hold. And next thing you know, I'm talking to this lady and she's asking me questions and I'm trying my best to sound official and sound legit. And uh, then I made a Pinterest board of all like the 1950s Americana, the whole Woody's vibe. And yeah, I think yeah, that, I love it. Yeah. That, 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 that got to Kendall and she was like, you know, I like, I want to do a, a shoot like this. So I think the word got back to her agent, like do it no matter what. So she was negotiating against me, the brokest guy in the world, and I was just wouldn't budge off my low, low, low number. And so eventually it, it came through and it made it happen. Some things are worth eating ramen for, buddy. Definitely know, sounds man. like you had your goals in it's, check. Well, well, it's, it's an advantage to be, to be uh, constrained by budget sometimes. It's an advantage because you, you have the ultimate negotiating position. No, I really am. I really can't afford that. Really, truly. Right. There's no fighting it. <laughs> but but the, the thing that – at least for me that I resonated with you and your brand is what you just said is that you knew you had a low budget. You, you didn't, you saw 150,000 or whatever their offer. And you were like, yeah. you know what? I'm still going to go for it. Cause the more that I keep doing the podcast, the more I keep, we keep expanding and working on this. It's mm-hmm. just taking the first step to action. Like, like when you take mm-hmm. the first step, it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, the other steps clear. And then you keep walking. Next one's easier. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of snowballs from there. All you have to do is like start. That's why my favorite book in that pile is called Shut Up and Listen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, it's yeah, uh, right here. Yeah. Tillman Fertitta. Um, it's super small. I think it's like a hundred pages, but it's basically okay. just like you, it's this dude who is all about service. Like he has restaurants and things that he runs hotels and it's all about customers, you, and then not taking no for an answer. It's easy okay. read, super simple. Um, and the other one that I read um, is the Education of Millionaires book. Something they do not teach you anywhere else. It's the same story. It's like, I'm broke. I've got $25,000. I want Kendall yeah. Jenner. It's like, go for it. You know, like, that's all it is. It's taking the first step. Yeah. Not, getting, not getting deterred by your first, you know, shot down. Like, ah, oh, it didn't work out. Guess I'll, guess I'll give up. Nope, you just keep yeah. going. It's that yeah. simple. Put, put Woody's aside for a second. I started another brand. It didn't really take off, but it was called ticker, Start right? Today. It, oh. well, well, ticker, ticker was the watch company, but this one was called Start Today. And it was just a t-shirt that said Start Today in the biggest, boldest letters that I could find. And the whole, the whole thing was I started the company in a day because I got the idea and I made the shirt. And the whole, <laughs> the whole ethos is whatever you're, whatever you're doing or whatever idea you come up with or whatever way, whatever goal you want to move towards just start today and everything else you'll figure it out along the way but the hardest part is really just the start and so i really try to build my life philosophy around start today start today like if, if you can master start today you, every road is available oh absolutely that's, i'm gonna write that down core that's that was eloquent oh yeah well, right. it, the same story goes for um he was really popular um because he was featured on like a gary v like his podcast, like 2017, long time ago. His name's John Henry Style on Instagram, if okay. you've ever heard of him. Um, mm. Same thing. He was driving down the highway, realized um, he's like, ooh, I have an idea. Pulled over, got on Squarespace, started this makeshift website, and then that's all it took. He goes, within the next month, just by calling, and then now he has a huge real estate set up in like where he's from, like New York. So like, yeah. it's that simple. It's like, just like, go like, and, yeah. and I know that sounds super cheesy and I've heard every single motivational person in my life talk about that, but it's that simple. Yeah. 
And so I was going to ask, so other than um, your, because I said you studied uh, what economics at uh, University of Florida. There was no plan yep. B. Yeah. Correct. And so, um, I mean, you got, you got education there um, from college, but do you have any other allegedly. resources? And yeah, allegedly, <laughs> I was going to say, which was, which was, which was better for you, the college education or scalping tickets at the, at the football game? You really did your, yeah. your Carfax on this guy. Man. Dude, I, I got to respect, car facts. <laughs> I respect the Gently Buzz podcast, man. This is, you guys got it going on. That's exactly right. The ticket scalping was, was far and away the, great, the greatest piece of education I got out of my time in Florida. And it was, <laughs> it, it had everything. It had, uh, you know, rejection built into it. It had uh, run-ins with the law a little bit. It had <laughs> stiff competition. It had, uh, you know, it had economics in it. And it, it was, it was amazing. So I would, I would buy tickets from fellow students and I would get my fraternity brothers to help me upgrade the tickets. And I would list them on StubHub and, and just I, the greatest thing was standing on the street with a handful of tickets and nobody was buying. And I just had to keep standing there, you know, and people are walking by me and people are drunk and people are you know shouting crazy things but i just had to keep standing there keep holding up those tickets and eventually sold them and that was that was the greatest lesson i think i think every entrepreneur every person just really going into the world needs some big rejection therapy experience where where they just 99 people said no but then one out of 100 said yes and that was enough to keep it going well, that actually uh, brings me to a question, actually. Yeah. You know, you, you honestly don't get as driven as you are without being told no. And right now, you, you're a huge success. You're an entrepreneur. You know, you travel the world for a living. If you want to drop names right now, if it'll be mm -hmm. my guess, you know. I, I, I want to know who told you no. Oh, I mean, all the, all the thousands of people walking by me that those days when I'm holding the tickets up. You know, I'm like, hey, to, you know. Who wants to buy these? No. Who wants to buy these? You want to buy these? No. Do you, anybody need two tickets, three tickets, four tickets? Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no. And so just all day long hearing no, but then one out of a hundred persons saying, yes, I want those tickets. That was the, that was the no. Plan probability other, and odds. What other, what other no's are out there? I'll give you some, some no motivation. Uh, I was at, I was at Magic, which is this uh, fashion trade show, the biggest fashion trade show. And I was just doing, doing my thing with Woody's. And this other Wood sunglasses brand was called Schwood sunglasses. They were called and what? Schwood, S-H-W-O-O-D. And they were like high-end, fancy glasses. They were like made in Oregon or like real, real fancy. They had a real nice brand. I think they were the number one name in Wood sunglasses at that time. So, Schwood. Schwood. Huh. Are they still around? I'm like, I can Google. Oh, I've never around. heard of them. I know people right now are trying to imitate the Woodies, you know, not to be that yeah. guy, but our friend even had some like knockoff looking Woodies the other day. I'm like, yeah. what? It happens. It happens. It's part Imitators, of it. man. So, so I went and talked to this guy, the owner of Schwood, and and uh, he, I was like. I was like, yeah, you know, let's, let's get to know each other. It's, you know, it's nothing wrong with friendly competition or something like that. And he said, he said, oh, I don't really, I don't really think of us as competition. I don't really consider you competition. Is basically what, what oh, and, uh, <laughs> and it was like this, it was like this light bulb moment, like this Kanye moment. I was like, oh man, there's my, <laughs> there's my hater fuel. Like I, oh. Uh, yes, so there that. it is. So that was that was one of my one of my good fuel moments. But you know that. It was, that was like a blip. It wasn't like I woke up every day thinking about that. That was just like, yeah. you know, those, little, those little moments that slight you. They do add something else. They, they add a little grit, a little, a little fire. You know? I like yeah. that. You weren't waking up angry at hipsters every day, but I like that. Well, yeah. When, yes. exactly, when exactly did you start Woody's? Because uh, Schwood started in 09. So if they said, uh, you know, competition, those dudes got yeah. way too cocky. Yeah, a bunch, a bunch of hipsters from Oregon, man. Come on. They were like, 2009. Oh, yeah, yeah 2000. So I, no, so I started, I started in 2000, gosh, 2012 or 13. Where are we at? 2020 right now? Yeah. So yeah. 2000, yeah. like, like August, 2012, something like that. Oh yeah. No, I wasn't saying you started in 2009. If that, if oh that yeah. Was clear. Fluid. 
Schwitz oh, yeah, started in 2009. So then Their yeah, name's yeah, not even as catchy. Been. Right. So, like, if, if you were, yeah, if yeah. you were coming onto the scene and they were like, "Oh, we've been here forever. It's no big deal. We'll take them out." Yeah. Bum, yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. yeah. Look at it. Look right. at you now. I've guys. never even heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've yeah. never heard of them either. The name, the name's not I that good Google anyway. Them. I was like, Woody's. I've heard of Woody's. Schwood. Never yeah. heard of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who, who are they? They're, they're not even going to be okay. a footnote in the book, man. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. They're doing their thing, but yeah, that was a that was a motivation moment for sure. But yeah, no. And so, um, so now you're, I'm surprised you haven't talked to more people. Like I, like, we appreciate you being here so much, dude, on this call. Um, and when I was doing, when I was doing my due diligence, my research, um, Mm -hmm. there was an article, I was like, you know, I have to ask him this question, not to be vain, not to be put business out there. But the article said that in that first year of Woody's, your revenue was $3.5 million when selling through Amazon. Was it really? Who it, said that? No, no. Okay. No, I that? was like, because that, that no, was an no, article no. that popped up, and I was like, um, the haberdasheries. I was like, uh-uh. maybe, maybe that's wrong. Okay. Because I was like, uh-uh. but, but. You uh, can't ask a man that. That's kind of personal. Oh, no. That, no, that, that, no you, you it's can not ask like me he that. took that, It's yeah. not like he took Oh, that okay. It's the company. Yeah. Like in year one, that's how much his company had made no, revenue. No, and I was no. like, dude. I was like, that's well, so insane. I, because, so I start, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. Well, well, so I started Woody's in, like, what did I say, 2012, 2013. The first year, the first three years of revenue was, like, less than $30,000 or $40,000 or $50,000. It was, it, like, the first, the first couple of years. Okay, well, okay, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. There was this initial huge pop. All right, let me go back in the story. Me and my friends were, me and my friend Mike and Randy were living in Chicago, Illinois for a summer and we were like what are we gonna do with our lives guys and they were living in China importing stuff back and forth and I was like coming in and they were like Corey like do you want to join our you know like do something together I'm like yeah like what ideas do we got and so we're like we're, like looking around one of the things we come across is wood sunglasses right and before that I had been doing ticker which was this this watch company of all these different colors and so I had this relationship with Groupon so here's here's the story the, the nitty gritty story, the gently buzz exclusive story. Right, <laughs> right on. All right. So we're, uh, so I'm in Chicago, which happens to be the headquarters of Groupon. And so we get these wood sunglasses samples and I, through my ticker connection, I'm able to access the building. And then once I'm in the building and I talk to the guy I'm supposed to talk to, I kind of just like linger around until I find the, <laughs> the person in charge of sunglasses. No, no. So, hey, Corey, can I pause for one sec? Hey, yeah, go Wayne, for what, what did you tell me when I was hitting people up? What was your catchphrase? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like Chase I like is like, they're, they're, yeah. they're not going to, Chase is over there like, they're not going to get back to us. They're going to tell us no. I said, look, man, you do it a million times, all right? Odds are one in a million chance, you know, they can do it, so you got to do it a million times. I said, and then I said the other thing, and I said, by the end of the day, they're going to give you a restraining order. Or they're going to give you what you want. I said, and it's always cheaper and easier. Just give me what I want, right? You just got to keep hitting them up. Yeah, yeah man. You like, want to go through the process of getting the restraining order? What do you need? What do you need? Really? But so you're just if they don't like, like two weeks. I'm in the lobby. Hello. Nice to see you. Dude. <laughs> well, I think a president did that. He was trying uh, – not a president. Uh, Winston Churchill. He did that to oh, somebody. Yeah. He was trying to – I can't remember what it was he was trying to achieve. And then they, uh, they're like, quit writing us notes or whatever. And then he, uh, he's like, okay, fine. They're getting mad. Okay. So then he wrote two. And they kept telling him no. <laughs> then he started yeah. doing five a day. And then they're like, fine, we agree. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I thought that was oh. perfect for your, cat, your catchphrase. I heard that and I go, okay. Don't, yeah. don't get deterred. Never. Yeah. I'm going anyway, to steal sorry, that. Sorry, I'm going to steal that one, the restraining order. Well, so luckily yeah. that day, that luckily that day, I didn't get the restraining order. I found the lady and, uh, and she was, she was wanting to do sunglasses. Now, here was the, was the tricky part was um, so I put in a third of the money. My friends, Mike and Randy, they put in a third of the money and a certain group on employee who I won't name insisted that he would also be able to invest in Woody's for a third of the money. If, and if he, if we did that, he would put us on the front page 
of Groupon Ooh. for that day's deal. Wow. So, so with that little inroad, um, on the first day, we did sell something like, like 6,000 pairs of sunglasses at like $60 each, you know, supposed retail, or like $100 each supposed retail, but Groupon price 39 or something like that. So it right, was a big right pop, pop day on that first day. It was a huge pop. We didn't make much profit on that day, but we got a lot of woodies out into the world and got the, the wheels rolling. So then, but then kind of stalled for a couple of years where I only did like 50 grand in revenue for a whole year one right. time after that. And then once Amazon came around, that's when the, the more consistent upward trend start and that's carried on to where we are today so that's the that's the deep dive going backwards yeah no, i like that i like that too so, um core you're kind of like a convertible i think you know you just straight roofless oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> roofless <laughs> man there's no glass yeah, ceiling dude. the sky's the limit for you bro you're that's roofless awesome. that's right man take the top off i'm roofless yeah, roofless <laughs> straight roofless but uh and yeah. you said mike was that uh is that mike stone Mike, no, Michael Shearhorn. That was my friend that, that uh, joined Woody's in the beginning and then the Groupon guy. And then just a year later, I bought both those guys out. So I've owned Woody's 100% for like seven years. What are they making now? Are they still entrepreneurs? What's Mike doing? Mike is doing uh, basketball training kits, still an entrepreneur. He's, he, he actually got me into tickets, guys. I mean, Mike's worth a worth a podcast episode in himself because when you get Mike on, Mike Definitely. has been in, yeah, of course. he's been in deep deep China since two thousand eight, and oh, wow. and he's still and alive he's, with all this stuff going on. I I know, <laughs> I know. Or he said he's not coming back because they have too much information on him or something sketchy. But he's oh, whoa he's so funny. whoa dude. He's, yeah he's so he's a secret agent man he's funny uh he was doing <laughs> these bas he was doing these basketball tours he would get like really good division one division two basketball players and take them on these tours of china and like make you know several thousand dollars per exhibition game and people would Dude. i mean imagine the chinese just fill in those stands just yeah. all in these back road tournaments i mean he's he's got some stories but mike was one of the original uh founding members of woody's and then how's the deal and you got cool. your turned on to scalping that's cool yeah. Well, and then the Maybe. thing was like, um, I knew that I, well, let me, let me put it this way. So I had a similar, uh, run at like Shopify e-commerce kind of probably three years ago. I didn't okay. know anything about it. I knew zip. And I just randomly said, okay, you know what I can sell? Look at me. I'm fashionable. Also, also mm -hmm. <laughs> like cool clothes accessories, wallets, all this kind of stuff. You wear your sister's was, clothes half the time. Don't well, eat it. Cause it was, well, I mean, cause like I said, it was, it was, it was cheap. It's from China. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it cheap, it comes there. I mean, I wasn't, you know, these were not woody quality material. This was like, oh, okay, no. I can get a wallet for 10 cents and make it look really nice. <laughs> that, so I, that was, I mean, I was like, what, 19, you know, I was a dumb kid. So I'm still a dumb kid, but can just continue the story. <laughs> but, um, and so I was just kind of dab dabbling in the water and it was super easy to work with Shopify to make your store, um, you know, put everything on there and it was mm -hmm. fulfilled by them. So, you know, it wasn't a shock to me when, you know, I saw their stock prices go through the roof three years ago because mm -hmm. it was super simple and everyone was going to jump on it. But like I said, mm -hmm. it was just never, you have to have, you have to have a Woody, you have to have uh, a, that style that brand kendall mm -hmm. liked that 1950s woody's brand that's what she, oh i want to do that shoot so bad right it wasn't just yeah. like oh another pair of sunglasses you got to have that story that meaning that you drive do. behind it and then behind the story you got to have the people like us who aren't going to stop they're going to get the restraining order ruthless <laughs> get kicked out of the <laughs> yeah. so yeah. it was just that you know and you know i'm not trying to make any kind of 2020 statement but it's you know, it's hard to find like-minded people that way. You know, it's just kind of like, yeah. you know, nose down, don't look up, no motivation. And I'm like, dude, you got to read, you got to read this. This is insane. I'll change your whole perspective. And no one mm -hmm. gives you the time of day. 
no one looks at you and I'm like, you know what? Just keep We're going. just different. Yeah, that's exactly what it well, is. Well, you, you guys are definitely different because this is, you know, we're in the middle of the Corona pandemic and this has just shut a lot of people down. I feel like motivation is at like this all time low. You know, Absolutely. I haven't, I haven't been getting email offers to, to do anything or talk to anybody. And so here you guys are like, like chugging, you guys are like, the train is moving. You guys like don't have time, don't have mm -hmm. patience to just put your whole life on pause just nope. because the world isn't like feeling it right now and here you guys are so kudos to you gently buzz podcast you have thank my, you my hat's off to you my captain's hat is off to you thanks bro. We appreciate Corey. that is bro. that true do you wear that everywhere yeah. <laughs> i wear that captain's hat so goddamn much i mean i'm a i'm an adult i'm an adult but i'm i'd say i'd say 100 days a year i'm wearing a captain's hat <laughs> that is so cool uh, now now how'd you get the idea for the captain well my my dad bought a boat and my sister bought him a hat, captain's hat, and he just wasn't interested in wearing it. So I put it on as I was going out to some Sunday brunch where, you know, plans to party, right? And, yeah. And, I, and all of a sudden, people just wanted to buy the captain some drinks. And buy the, like I was the brunch <laughs> captain that day. You know, I just felt like I, I ruled the brunch space with, that, with my captain's hat. And then as I traveled around, I wore it around, I figured out that life is 15% better when you're wearing a cap and hat or probably any goofy hat in general, but 15% is the exact figure that it just improves your just, overall experience as you move through exactly the world. 15. Can we do like how to get free beer or whatever clip it in there? Yeah. We need goofy, to. Goofy. That's how you get free beer right there. Well, that's why I wear yeah. a cap and hat. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, but, um, but so it's, I don't know. Like you said, it's just, it's all about putting that work in. And like I said, I, yeah. you know, and, uh, what, what's I, your guys goofy, goofy things? What, 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 like uh, signature, what's your guys signature uh, stuff? We're goofy. Uh, man, that, that, that's hard one to pin down. We sell all kinds well, of stuff. The, that's, that's, <laughs> we do all kinds of things. That's where we got this idea. So, um, okay. I, I knew, I knew Wayne, um, since high school. Now yeah. back then, put in mind, you know, I may look beefy on camera. But I was like 130 pounds at five foot nine. I was a skinny cross country runner, and this okay. and I had nobody to lift with in, in weight class. So Wayne looks okay. over. He goes, "Hey, come over here. We need a partner. Yeah, We're, we don't have anybody today." You said so, we. It was just me. I didn't have. <laughs> like, it was just me on one set, and then you on one set. Yeah. And then our coach goes, "Partner up." And we were like, oh, "Okay, we don't have anybody." So I met him, and you know, he killed me because he was bigger than I was. So. Uh, yeah. That's how we met. And from that moment on, when we would hang out, people were like, you guys, you guys keep our attention. You guys are fun. You're entertaining. You make yeah. it. And so, you know, when, when, uh, in January, February of this year, I was like, dude, I listened to Joe Rogan talk about all this stuff. I hear these people mm -hmm. going about it. And I told, I told Wayne that the one thing that made me so mad, it was like the final straw. It was... I'm going to name drop because I don't watch them anymore because I can't stand it after this episode. Drop but it, bro. I was watching Impulsive, their podcast. And, like, the camera school, their setups are great. And they had, like, a professor on. I don't, I don't know how they scored a doctor or how they got him yeah. to be on the show. And he was doing, like, active research into, like, advanced technologies. Like, that was his whole spiel in California. Wasn't it physics as well? Yeah, he, it was everything. Anything alien tech, it was like a huge big deal. Dr. Greer or something like that. And they, they didn't think of any intelligent questions. They did no research. Their main mm -hmm. question was, would you, would you have sex with an alien if you had the chance? And they rode that mm -hmm. thing for like 20, 30 minutes. And I shut mm -hmm. my computer and I said, we can do this way better. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it was just like, like you said, Corona may have shut everybody else down. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, even... Even my parents are looking down, just do your work. Maybe, maybe it'll, it'll go smooth. And I'm like, how can yeah. you guys be comfortable that way? You know, how can yeah. you, how can you, and I, I, I don't know, maybe it's called, cause I have a, I have a six year old, uh, Corey. Okay. So okay. I've got a, I got a cool. six year old boy and, uh, cool. I've, I've had him since he was tiny. He, dad's been there a hundred percent. Probably since he was zero, right? Yep. <laughs> I, I was there. The, yeah, well, you know what I mean? Like most people get you know most dads leave and you were how okay. old you were how old yes. when you had a kid uh, i was 16. he so, was six, right. he did it the right way man and everything all so, right yeah. so uh, so 
you know, me and his mom have a decent relationship, um, but I have majority custody. And so for me, if, if I lose my job, me and him are in, are in, are in deep shit. Like, yeah. and to me, I was like, what? When I'm going to just keep my nose down, not look, not, not look at the coronavirus. No, it's every book I've ever read has said, make multiple streams of income, but it all starts with one. So I said, screw it. And we'll do the, we'll do the show. And so that I mean, was the riskiest, I, yeah. riskiest thing in the world is to put all your eggs in one basket and trust mm-hmm. someone else will, uh, will keep your job available for you. I mean, that's, 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 it's. Well, what trust is the, left? Everything failed during the coronavirus. Economics gone. Economy yeah. tanked. You couldn't go to the store to get food to save your life. Gas prices are down. I'm just glad I can fish and hunt. You know, that was kind of my plan. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you're yeah. lucky that, the, like you said, I think they said vitamin D and sunlight is a huge factor for coronavirus. So people on the beach mm-hmm. in the middle of the day, like, mm-hmm. kudos to you guys. But it was just, I've never been that kind of guy. I've never been that kind of person to put all my eggs in one basket and feel safe because everything, employment's gone down. 20 million yeah. Americans had no jobs. And so it was, for me, it was like, this is, this is obvious. You guys seem out of the loop. You guys should probably catch up on what's going on. But yeah. so like, my, like I said, my parents are just, you know, and all respect to them. Everyone's working their jobs trying to get through this. But um, you're lucky enough because your mother is a customer relations. And I sent her the email first. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I thought that was the coolest thing ever because there's also a card in our Woody's box that says email mm-hmm. my mom. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It gives it that personal touch as well as the 1950s. It definitely it. does. It was great. And who's better to keep you organized than your own ma? You yeah, know what I mean? Oh, man. <laughs> and and who, can, who can care about customer service like a mom cares? You know, there's, there's oh, just yeah. a, level, it's a level of concern that only your own mom can really pull up. You can't hire somebody that, that cares as much yeah. as her. Uh, she's, mm-hmm. Guys, she's really been so great. Uh, the whole, I mean, imagine me running Woody's and running every aspect of Woody's. Accounting, marketing, design you know, web development. I mean, I'm wearing every single hat. Customer service was the last thing I wanted to do at the end of the day. And right. the thing that really requires you to be at your most empathetic, your most high energy. And I was getting bad reviews online because I just wasn't taking care of business. Every customer interaction, I was approaching it like some kind of battle. Like it's, it's win or lose. It's me versus them. And <laughs> Game of Thrones style. Obviously, right. Obviously a horrible way. Yeah, I was, I was Ned Stark just cutting people's heads off with customer yeah. service. And uh, in comes mom. And she said she'd take this, this part over for me. And instantly Woody started to flourish because one factor was because I had more time to focus on sales and growth and working on the business. And the other thing is she just turned every customer interaction into a raving fan, especially the worst, maddest people. The maddest people who came in cursing up a storm. I bought these glasses and they arrived broken and it was like this. And yeah. somehow, and then mom turns the, the mom vibe on them. And she's like, well, just so you know, I'm Corey's mom. And they're like, they're like, sorry, ma'am. I'm, I apologize, ma'am. I, this is stout. Just, I'm sorry. Yeah. She disarms them right away. And, uh, and, she, and she has so much fun with it, man. Like people, people come and, and say, here's what went wrong. And she somehow opens them up and they tell her their story. And so a, an email interaction that should take two emails back and forth. I see her go on like 20 email back and forth chains. Uh, recently, this guy, this guy's son had committed suicide. And oh, no. one, of the, one, of the, one of the things they shared was this, this, these Woody's and that his son played guitar. And you guys know that Woody's come with a guitar pick. Yeah, I saw so, that. they do. That's awesome. So, we play guitar yeah, so also. He's, oh, badass! All right, awesome. All right, so he's he's um he's thinking of ways to to connect for his son and, and honor his son, and so he's talking to my mom, and he gets the idea to make custom wood guitar picks with his son's initials on them. And my mom goes through all this trouble to get those made, and she sends it to him, and now they're like lifelong friends. And so. This oh, wow. this mom and this customer service thing, she really just turned this into like, like, like this the greatest outreach program for the world because everybody that comes into contact with her, she just like finds a way to lift them up. It's amazing, and she uses sunglasses as like the the vessel to like reach them, 
but it's just it's just her and her light just shining on everyone. So it's it couldn't have worked out better for me. I think she enjoys it, and the real winners are just everyone that emails her. That's, well, yeah. That's really. Well, the good news yeah. is uh, that didn't affect your Amazon because you have over four thousand reviews that are all positive, yeah. and it's all ninety nine percent positive. So uh, kudos to yeah. your mom. Tell her hi for us, and thanks for yeah. uh, getting the email to you and uh, making oh, this yeah. happen. Because like I said, Will I just do. I interviewed Will your do. mama. And I said, oh, excuse me, ma'am, could I interview Corey for a... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stout. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need to get mom on some podcasts one of these days. She's got some stories, too. We're to down. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, I saw a lot of those, like some of those reviews that were, I'm like, what, are, what could they say that is bad? And it was like, this came broken. And then, you know, Amazon came in and said, no, we have fulfilled that order. It's our bad. That kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah. even though your mom went the extra mile to do all that stuff. Yeah, I'd love to meet yeah. your mom. That'd be cool. Yeah. We, should. we definitely extra, have her on the show. Extra light. She's cool. Cool. But so cool. But yeah, like so and I was gonna I was gonna get into it earlier, but um so I like I said, I love to read. Um do you have any do you have for for me and, and the audience, do you have any uh, book recommendations? Um so like I have uh rental property investing with bigger pockets. They have a podcast, mm-hmm. they have a I'm website. Bigger pockets mm-hmm. is a huge mm-hmm. place for real estate. Um, mm-hmm. when you were, when you were beginning your journey with this company and Woody's and developing mm-hmm. it, did you have any books that were your favorite, any resources, um, that helped you kind of expand your mind? I know, uh, four hour work week was a mention, uh, that's a yeah. classic. And then you were talking let's about just, a book called slide edge as well. Yeah. I just finished that. Let's, let's just talk about books in general for a second. I, I can't yeah. believe that books that pe- more people just don't read more. I mean, it's impossible I mean, to so. not improve your life after you read a book. And, and there's, yeah. there's a certain, these, these personal development books, especially the classics, Think and Grow Rich, like all these like classic yeah. self-development books. My, my earliest one was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens, which were like, as a 12, 13 year old, like just blew my mind that this was a, there's a way to think about yeah. things, you know, just a way to understand the world. And exactly. isn't it amazing that reading a book can improve your the rest of your life by I think one percent, which if you think about it is amazing, which is a huge yeah. amount. Every one of these books has the potential to improve your entire the entire rest of your life by one percent. And so the the books that really that really got me going. So Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens that was that was a way back in the day. Uh, you the know, based one. on the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, but it was a more approachable version of that. Uh, four hour work week was definitely the one Tim Ferriss was a pioneer in the whole, uh, lifestyle design. You know, we we were, we were really all tied to that, that narrative of, you know, education, job, work at the job forever until you have enough money to retire. And then when you're 70, try to travel a little bit before you die with that money you saved. Like that whole model, he broke through that. Uh, what else really Seth Godin? was a big influence of mine um it wasn't even just his books just his daily newsletter he has the oldest longest running um blog in the world some of his entries are just two or three sentences and he he really harps on this idea of just shipping you know he's like whatever idea you got like you need to just ship it like get it out into the world even if it's not perfect it's not going to be perfect when you launch but just get it going so i mean purple cow is is his probably most famous title and it's it's all about just finding a way to be remarkable be interesting enough that somebody's gonna say like oh cool interesting um i just finished slight edge and it has a a, it's a lot of the same concepts of these other books but it had a little a little twist to which i really liked it really harped on the idea that the universe is curved and so as we're moving through time things are either trending up or they're trending down and you, your choices are like little investments or little loans that are going to either bring you profit someday in the future, or you're going to have to pay interest on them. Right. So, right. you know, eat, eating, eating that certain unhealthy meal or, or choosing not to work out is, is a decision that's gonna find its way back to your reality somewhere in the future. On the flip side of that, every good thing you do for yourself, every book you read, every dollar you invest, every uh, idea you bring to fruition, every lesson you learn is going to bring you on that upward path. 
And so Slight Edge was a, probably my book of the year this year. And those are, that's my, that's my latest list. But yeah, I was going to say, um, so apparently someone's at my door for the apartment complex. So um, yeah. okay. I, that kind of sucks. Cause they just can't, just they, go take a, go see who it is. It, it'll be a minute. I know and it'll be a minute. I don't know why, but they didn't send an email or whatever. I, I got the notification either way. But um, the last thing I was going to say is, Corey, you don't even have to read. They have audio books. So people don't even have to read anymore. You can listen right. to it. Welcome to a right. podcast. Um, but, yeah. uh, but Corey, man, uh, that's all my questions. Uh, do we appreciate your time? We do. And, um, hey, man. Thanks for having me on guys. Hey guys, yeah. next time I'm in the Tulsa, Kansas area, let's get together. It's not, it's not too much distance. We, can hey, we definitely should, man. Absolutely. Um, is that, is that email good? Uh, cause I'll send you, I'll send you our phone numbers and, well, definitely, definitely. Get, yeah. we can get together. That'd be cool, dude. man. That'd be absolutely awesome. Hey, man, put me on some, put me on some fishing. Let's try that. <laughs> let's, let's go. All right, Corey. Let's, right, we're gonna awesome. do it in your new boat car. Yeah, I was gonna I, say. I'm gonna I, say. I, I wish I, I gotta go check on it, but yeah, I hope I hope so. Hope we can do it in that boat car or the <laughs> amphibian car. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> there we go, man. All right, Corey. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for being on the phone call. Take it easy, bro. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Be good. Bye. All right. Bye.